simply or inherently Western. By the way, that's not Nazi, that's Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Why not go and study these other main civilizations as well as, let's say, smaller civilizations? Let's rethink things. Why do we always have, okay, uh, we have quarter tone, okay, let's give it an eighth of tone, okay, maximum sixteenth of tone, that. It's not about uh, uh, equal division and, let's say, <coughs> Descartian systemization of everything. formation in the classical Persian traditions, so the so-called radif music, or dasra music as they call it. It is uh, different from folk music or um, other types of, let's say, what is con uh, what ethnomusicology is concerned with. It's just the classical music uh, uh, that Iranian people have had. And it, I think you can say it has this current form of it has uh, about 200 years of um, history. But uh, then I moved on to, I started playing piano also. I was amazed by uh, Western culture, Western music, and so on. And then I started composing. And the whole thing that you have to be true to yourself and to your origins and blah, blah. Uh, which is a thing, I don't uh, suggest it to young people. Um, uh, but uh, seriously, I was having a problem because there were a phenomenon in Persian music in the first formation, uh, my first uh, musical formation, that in the second formation, that is the, the Western classical music, even in the mo uh, highest, let's say, the most modern ones, that was the contemporary, so-called contemporary music, it wasn't easily explainable. First of all, because our theory was based on our understanding of musical theory in the, within the Western paradigm. So whatever theory that was built up d during the past 120 years with uh, uh, Jean-Baptiste Lumet, a French uh, guy who came to Iran, and he started uh, playing our music with the piano. And it, there is, if you look for it, you can find this uh, chanson persan, something like that, which is obviously a complete, uh, let's say, um, a complete, diff completely different interpretation of what it was. And from there on, every step of uh, Persian music theory was based on this, these fundamentals, let's say the paradigm of uh, Western musical theory. But let me just come back to my own story again as a composer. I'm just fascinated with this interval that we have, the so-called Koron and Suri, Iranian guys you hear, must have known about it. Uh, and some genius uh, Iranian guy came coming back from um, uh, uh, from uh, West. He just decided to give two names to these phenomena, and now we have two names for them. We also have two signs for them. So let's be thankful. It's Ali uh, Nabi about eight years ago. 
But my challenge was how to communicate this phenomenon to, say, um, uh, Western violin um, cellist. I wrote a piece called Sguardi su Shur. Uh, Shur is a By the way, that's not Nazi, that's Nazi. Shur <laughs> <laughs> uh, is a Persian musical mode, um, and then Daska, which I will explain later. But anyway, in this piece, I wanted to tell this guy that, uh, okay, this interval is not this, not neither that. I, I had to go to this. I knew for sure that it's not quarter tone. It's not even fifth of tone, sixth of tone. I, I, I couldn't get around with this paradigm of division and saying, uh, uh, let's say, a fraction of something. There was something wrong with the methodology. But anyway, this uh, great guy, Nicola Baroni, he, he had a great ear. He also loved uh, Persian music. So he just got around it and about listening. sensibility of this interpreter but this was not a let's say firm ground this piece has been played by about 10 people in different places and uh, many of them were fascinated by Persian music but some of them weren't also but fascinated about the so-called microtonality uh, which I will talk about also uh, why I hate this word uh, <laughs> um, uh, but there is, this is part of my research, uh, the, the big research is that sounds theater thing that you see up there. It's my artistic project, and this research is about sis, uh, sense and sensibility in working with systems. Okay, so when I, pr uh, and systems can be like, uh, simple like a harmonic system, whatever, uh, or a tonal system, but it can also be a cultural system. Um, in this case, Nicola Baroni had the sensibility to adapt himself to a new system that was, he's actually still, after six, six seven years, he's still asking me to teach him the radif and so on. He's amazing. Um, but my um, research <clears throat> took me to find, to go for a kind of a genealogy of intervals of this choral. I'm not the first one, there have been excellent uh, researchers, musicologists who have worked on them. You see uh, Bakesh Lee uh, introduced the um, 15th to 14th harmonic as choron. Farhad introduced 11 to 10 harmonic. And then there is this uh, French uh, musicologist Jean Durin. Uh, who has lived in Iran for a long time, he plays Persian music very well, and he has done a very interesting study, and he has gone to each master of like Persian music to do um, like calculations. And it's interesting that there is no consensus with these people. They are all important, credible people. There is no consensus between, okay, what is the exact, how many cents, whatever. Uh, this made me think maybe we shouldn't be looking for neither calculations nor um, like phenomenology, let's say, 
okay, what is Persian music? How do people work? Let's see. But we need to go to another method that is genealogy. Genealogy in the sense that let's imagine, let's go back in time in, in the history of intonation and see how things worked out. Well, uh, to give you a, um, just to um, say that this is my idea that uh, Koron, the best presentation of Koron is 1312. I will, exp I will explain why. And it's really not important that number. What is important though is how do we talk about intervals? Now let's open this microtonality thing. I'm actually part of a lot of microtonal societies and blah, 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 and they're cool people. But I have one important problem. Uh, some, uh, the Estonian Association of Microtonality just uh, uh, categorized 702 types of intervals uh, within two octaves. And I'm wondering what we can do with them. Um, Another problem is this word, microtonality. We started, let's go back a little bit in the history of Western music, okay, tonality, and then, no, let's do something else, then, okay, atonality, something tonality, microtonality, blah, 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 blah. But there is a problem here. The word microtonality is born within this paradigm. So anything uh, other than these intervals uh, is microtonal. But how about a string quartet? You know, there are, there's at least 22 cents the difference between the e, e that you get from the fifth um, harmonic of uh, lowest string of cello and the E that the violin uh, tunes as a perfect fifth day. So already there is the inherent problem of intonation in classical music, apart from these instruments that are just systems, blah, blah. <coughs> so Persian music is not microtonal, or it is as, mu as much microtonal as Bach's music is microtonal. It is just another intonation. And to understand it, we need to do another genealogy of the intonation. Our problem probably, uh, unfortunately, was that up in, until the Middle Ages, there were great scholars who wrote uh, treat treatises about Persian music, uh, about music in general, intervals, and so on. But um, in the 17th, 18th century, we just started to lose that thing, and we, we needed to develop another kind of theory. And that theory was mainly de uh, developed based on the Western paradigm. So, Western paradigm tells us how many types of second do we have? Right? How many? Two. How many kinds of fifth do we have? that we have at least three, at least three types of uh, interval. And in a society, in a world that we want to live on equal terms of different civilizations, we need to recognize this. And we, if we are writing music theory books now and teaching the next generations, okay, how many types of second do we have? We can't just minimize things and say the rest is just microtonal. No. Okay? So, as you see, minor, neutral, the so-called, and major are important categorizations. Well, the uh, perfect fifth, which is not, uh, the, uh, sorry, um, for example, uh, the um, augmented fourth or diminished fifth, these are really just not perfect. So, uh, a diminished fifth can be uh, for example, eight, uh, 11, uh, 11, 8. Oh, 11, 8 is actually very nice, I like it. 
uh, it's very uh, consonant, it's harmonic. It's not like a triton, of, which I also like. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, this koron, or uh, as the old in the old treatises would, were called mujanna, with this uh, sign, as you see, means that it is. Okay, let's take the example of B flat to B uh, natural. And then we have B half flat, which is 50 cents lower. Coron is a bit lower than that. How much lower? <laughs> the same is sori, which is less used. Uh, it is a little bit higher than uh, the half shot. So, so just to say that it's not quarter tone. Well, as I said, I have discovered this idea, and to me it makes sense, that 12, 13, 14, and 16 would make a tetrachord that comprises the mode of shur, the one that I use in that piece, cello piece you heard. I have, uh, again, both phenomenological and genealogical uh, reasons for them. First, the other ratios which were introduced don't fit into a drone system. A drone system is any, any string instrument. And in Persia, in Iran, we have tar, setar, uh, kamanche, and they are all like usually t tuned in fifths, fourths, or very equal. Doesn't matter as, much, as, much as, as long as harmonics are concerned. So um, these drones have modal functions just the way harmony has functions in tonality. So if we have like the, the first uh, seven harmonics of uh, um, a tone creates a dominant that leads to a tonic that is not there. So it's a function of this tonality, of this uh, chord, in this uh, cultural system. In the same way, uh, if I want to sing to you like Mahur. have at least C and G there um, as drones. What do drones do? When I am playing, for example, uh, on C chord, and I take the 13th harmonic, which is also uh, the 13th, 13th division, equal division of the string, we know that, which is also Geniusly mentioned in the old book by Avicenna, the great uh, polymath, uh, Persian polymath, uh, Perso Islamic, let's say. Uh, he mentions the 13th as an important uh, interval. When we play on C string, and I have another drone of C, 13 works harmonically with that C. That's why it sounds good and it's natural. But 10, 11 wouldn't work in that drone system. 15, 14 wouldn't work in that drone system. The problem with the other researchers were that they were really fixed with the phenomenology of, let's see, just the, just the precision of the intervals of what the practice does. But what I try to do, again, I say, is to, to, to go to where does an interval come from? We all know that, so, okay, Pythagoras and blah, blah. Um, but I'm still not convinced with it. So, the, this is a theory of uh, Mr. Dariush Talayi. Uh, he identified four model tetrachords, a major, a minor, a tetrachord of shur, that is comprised of one koron, and then flat and blah blah, and the tetrachord of homayun, that is comprised of uh, one flat, one, sorry, uh, neutral, one coron and then 
a major umbrella. Bar. From this, he would go on to make uh, hypothetical scales. It's important to know that Persian music doesn't work with scales because it's mostly vocal based. Uh, what I mean is mostly cantabile rather than like doing arpeggios and stuff. So, no, naturally, you stay around so you stay in a zone and if you want to change that zone you can climb up the scale but the problem with this theory is that it's not true for example in the Daska of Mahur you have this M for the major tetrachord so the so you go to this is very common but it can, it can also go uh, it goes to the sure thing. It can go uh, major, major, then sure thing. Here the 13 is working. So, 8, 9, 10, then the, the F that comes from the lower G. 12, 13, 14, 13, 12, and it works. Maybe not to uh, someone who's not uh, like, I mean, if I, if you give it to a like Persian maestro, says, mm, no, it's not exactly what I am used to it. Of course, you're not used to it at, at first. And it's not going to say, uh, my, my theory is not going to say, these are the exact intervals. I'm not talking about exactness at all. I'm just giving a new, let's say, insight for a new theory and for a new understanding of Persian music. And these are only for interpretations, just like maps, which, are, which won't give you exactly where your girlfriend or boyfriend is sitting in the cafe. It just can go the, tell you that the cafe is probably closed, which is not, and then you go and you find, ah, she's there. Uh, this map of approximation uh, is important to um, understand that we should respect what the current uh, masters of Persian music are doing. I also practice Persian music still. I am quite. It's important to me. Uh, but how does this system work? We have drones. Let's say four of them, five of them, it depends on your instrument. And each of them is tuned on the um, basis of, um, of a, in a harmonic, uh, let's say, uh, ratio. Usually in fifth, but it can also go differently. And then all the intervals will be obtained by either the harmonics of this, first string or of the other drum. So, uh, need to skip these. For example, this uh, can give us, you see, uh, we have uh, C, all the ratios, then G, these are the, the drones. You see, we start from F, D, uh, C, G. Uh, those are the resulting notes that can be used in. So here we're not working with a list, with a system or exact system, but we're talking about the possibilities. This thing you see uh, in the back, it just uh, gives you uh, so many different possibilities uh, of interpretation and also of uh, musical creation. Uh, this could be another 
visualization of this thing. For example, I get F sharp from D. I get, for example, E from C. I get uh, uh, E coron from F. Uh, I get, uh, sorry, D coron from F. A coron from C, E coron from G, so on and so forth. And in general, the Daska concept is a very complex concept. It's actually a modular composition. It's a very, uh, you need to, I, I suggest you, you read uh, uh, Hormoz Farhat's book, uh, The Concept of Daska. It's a very good book, although not complete. My theory is that the further you go from your first, your lowest string, the more the dramatic tension. So here in Ross Band you go everything is cool, but we go as you go up to Humayun, Charka and so on, everything becomes more of a dramatic tension. It's like Things are uh, with Zeus or God or whatever, and then you come down to Earth in Shur, and then you go to war with Charga, something like that. What happened? Uh, what can you do? I go very fast. Well, this is a harmonic interpretation of Persian music, so we no, lo no longer have to say that Persian music is uh, monodic. It doesn't have to be, which is not, in my opinion. Uh, we talk about dramatic tension. It can give new insights about how to um, uh, interpret dramatic tension in Persian music. Uh, it can le lead to creation of new harmonic materials for composition, like what I did. And what, is, what was personally for me very important, because I just don't like repeating, okay, this melody is nicely melody. I really like to see, to make, create something that is my own. For me, this system was a kind of abstraction of a cultural phenomenon that gave me new, new uh, materials. For example, in this piece, played by uh, Versoy Ensemble from New York, uh, Helsinki, uh, just through century.
very a small criticism, but we are here in Ukam and it's a, such a symbolic place. Today, maybe we can say that new music or contemporary music is not principally or inherently Western. So why not start to rethink about things? Now that technology gives us the possibility to simulate uh, instruments and see what exact uh, uh, frequency would be produced if this much material would be used on this kind of string and blah, blah. <coughs> okay, why not go and study at least other main civilizations as well as, let's say, smaller civilizations. I, I'm all for... I, I just, I don't think I have enough time to live to know all the civilizations, which is a pity, or maybe it's good. Uh, um, let's rethink things. Why do we always have, okay, um, we have quarter tone, okay, let's give it an eighth of tone, okay, maximum sixteenth of tone. That, it's not about uh, um, equal division and, let's say, <coughs> Descartian systemization of everything. Not, uh, cultural phenomena are not hard systems. They are soft systems, if you want to call them. You have to go and learn about them and rebuild and update our axioms about music theory and how music is made in today's world. The last thing, I really wish I could know more about open music and do a, a one demonstration of how the ISOHD would be able to create a, for example, um, nice synthesis or something like that. But I leave it to your imagination. <laughs> okay. Thank you.